In this Remnant 2 build video, we'll be showcasing our first build, the Loaded Sharpshooter. This build is a combination of two DPS-oriented archetypes, which are the Gunslinger and the Hunter. These archetypes are known for their damage-augmenting passives that focus on DPS alone, and when paired together, they form a build that can use a vast array of weapons depending on your preference, designed to deal a significant amount of damage in a short amount of time. This build's gameplay highly depends on its active skills to undergo a burst phase that features an extremely fast fire rate coupled with fire damage. Carefully timed skill rotations are a must to make the most out of this build, and knowing when and where to activate both of its active skills plays a pivotal role in the success of this build. That out of the way, let's talk a bit more in detail about these two DPS archetypes. The Gunslinger contains perks that revolve around increased fire rates, decreased reload speeds, increased ammo reserves, and an increase in overall range damage. The Gunslinger serves as the main archetype for this build, so we take advantage of its prime perk, Loaded. Having access to instant reloads and unlimited ammo reserves works perfectly for what we're trying to accomplish. Dealing tons of damage is only possible if you have the ammunition, and the Gunslinger can alleviate your ammunition and reloading problems with this one perk alone. Luckily, unlocking the Gunslinger archetype is possible whether you pre-ordered the game or not. However, the overall process of unlocking it may require players a little bit of time. It starts with the NPC Mudtooth in Ward 13. After clearing your first rolled world and visiting the Labyrinth, activate the World Stone in the Labyrinth and return to Ward 13. Speak to Mudtooth, who is located beside Reggie, and exhaust his dialogue by listening to all of his stories. After exhausting all of it, Mudtooth will provide the player with a Gunslinger ring, which we will also be using in this build. Proceed with the story and complete the next world and labyrinth and return to Mudtooth. Exhaust his dialogue once again by listening to his stories. After listening to all of them, he will be grateful and reward you with the Gunslinger Charm, which is our main amulet for this build, and the Worn Cylinder, which you will use to craft an engram and ultimately unlock the Gunslinger archetype. The Hunter is the perfect second archetype for this build, improving its overall firepower across the board due to its perks and active skills that further increase range damage and critical hit chance. This build plays with decent critical hits, and when coupled with weapons with fast fire rates, the more chances that this build has to crit. You might ask, isn't the Hunter archetype designed to wield long-range weapons? And the answer is yes and no. The Hunter's active skills are well-rounded and can be tailored to different playstyles such as mid- or long-range combat. For this build, it is simply hard to say no to its skills and passives. Unlocking this archetype is a relatively easy task. Players can access the Hunter when choosing their first base class in the game when starting their first playthrough. However, if a player started with the Gunslinger or another archetype, players can still buy the Rusty Metal from Brabus in Ward 13 and craft the Hunter's Engram to unlock it. Moving on to the equipment, one thing that I love about this build is that it's easy to collect all the required weapons and accessories to make it work. The Loaded Sharpshooter is a beginner-friendly build that anyone can tweak according to their playstyle. We'll start by talking about the Loaded Sharpshooter's main weapon, the XMG-57 Bone Saw. Its sweet fire rate, decent range, and great amount of ammo reserve and capacity make it ideal for this build. Although it suffers from having low accuracy and bad recoil, these cons can be offset with traits later on. The XMG-57 Bone Saw can be acquired by buying it from Brabus in Ward 13 or simply get it by playing the Medic class. If you do not prefer the Bone Saw, I find the Black Maw AR-47 a good alternative. Players will have a slower fire rate by using this weapon, however its accuracy, good range, and firepower make up for it. Players can further improve this build by getting the Chicago Typewriter in the Labyrinth. A weapon with a good fire rate and overall stats if players do not prefer the Bone Saw's overheating mechanic. I decided to pair the Bone Saw with the Hotshot mod as it grants the ammunition the power of fire, resulting in a 15% boost to range damage for a duration of 20 seconds. Additionally, the shots cause a burning effect, inflicting fire damage over a span of 10 seconds. Not only do players deal a significant amount of DPS for a short period of time due to the build's insane fire rate, but the burn status ailment deals damage over time as well. Hotshot is one of your first readily accessible mods in the game, and making Ava McCabe and Ward 13 craft this mod for you is an easy task to do. Mutators, on the other hand, are hard to come by, and this part of the build will vary from player to player. As you progress further in the game, you'll gain access to more mutators and the resources to upgrade them fully. However, if you do have the Bandit Mutator, this is a good choice for this build. At level 10, there is a 30% chance of replenishing the expended ammo directly into the player's weapon magazine. Once ammo is restored in this manner, the weapon's fire rate receives a 10% boost for a duration of 3 seconds, with the potential to extend up to 10 seconds. This mutator not only recycles ammo, but further increases this build's fire rate. Getting it may be a rigorous process, however, and players can obtain it by exploring Yasha and through the Forgotten Field Zone. It is a boss drop from the Weld Stalker and the Gnarled Archer mini-boss. 
For the handgun, I prefer the MP60R due to its very fast fire rate and good ammo capacity, perfect for bursts of damage. Its highly accurate shots are appealing, especially when trying to hit enemy weak spots. Pair it with the active skills of this build, and you'll have a great sub-weapon in general, catering to the loaded sharpshooter's playstyle. What's so good about this weapon is it's painless to acquire. In Ward 13, there's a chest in Ford's room that requires a code for it to be unlocked. The code for this chest is encrypted on the flashlight that Ford gave you. Simply inspect it to get the code 0415 and receive the cargo control key. Past Merchant Dwell along the docks, players can observe a pathway leading to the cargo storage. Following this path will eventually lead to a rusty door. Use the cargo control key to open it and the MP60R is waiting on the other side. If you don't prefer the MP60R, Tech 22 is a great substitute. Its fast firing rate is perfect for this build, but it has lower ammo capacity. Players can buy it from Bravis or get it as a starting weapon when choosing the Handler as a starting class. The MP60R can be paired with the Boar mod, which forces the enemy to reveal their weak spots for more damage and adds damage over time on top of the player's bullet and fire damage, making it perfect for this build. Players can craft this mod when speaking to McCabe after beating the Abomination dungeon boss in Nerud and getting the mutated growth crafting material. The same goes for mutators for the handgun, as players can use any mutator that they have currently, but I find the refunder mutator that refunds bullets directly to the player's reserve to be a fantastic choice. The more bullets, the more damage you can deal. The refunder can be obtained by defeating the ED Alpha dungeon boss at the Tower of the Unseen in Nauru. The ideal melee weapon for this build depends on preference. When using this build, players will unlikely use their melee weapons. However, if players would want to be versatile in most cases, they can use any melee weapon that they prefer. In my personal build, I use the Spectral Blade due to its flashiness. Its special ability, Whirlwind, can slash enemies in a quick manner with a good AoE range. Players can acquire it by beating the main boss, Shahala Spectral Guardian, in the world of Nerud and getting its drop, the Adalon Shard, which can be given to McCabe in Ward 13 to craft the weapon. Now that the weapons are covered, it's time for accessories. Two of the pieces we've already covered, which is why this build is beginner-friendly. The amulet that works best early on in this build is hands down the Gunslinger Charm, which you can get from Mudtooth in Ward 13. This amulet increases fire rate by 15% and reload speed by 20%. A pretty straightforward addition, but a significant boost to this build's prowess. Next up, and our first ring for this build, is another Mudtooth reward, the Gunslinger's Ring. It increases firearm swap speed by 30% and reload speed by 10%, making it an absolute must for this build since players will be switching between weapons most of the time during burst phases. The next ring we use for this build is the Firestone Ring, which increases fire damage by 10% and fire resistance by 15%. A highly valuable ring that increases this build's overall damage since players are dealing fire elemental damage because of the Hotshot mod. A great ring that can easily be acquired by buying it from Reggie Malone in Ward 13. The last two rings can be anything depending on what you have since the worlds that players explore greatly vary. This build was built mainly for damage and what I prefer to use for this build in the third slot is the Vestige of Power ring which increases ranged and melee damage by 10% if you've been undamaged for 7 seconds. The said condition is fairly easy to achieve since enemies will be dead long before they hit you. Also as players progress in the game they will get better at avoiding damage. Players can get this ring by visiting the world of Yesha and exploring its Faithless Thicket Zone. The last ring for this lineup is the Wax Sealed Ring, which further increases the build's overall damage by stacking ranged and melee damage when landing killing blows. One of the easiest conditions to fulfill, especially when fighting lots of enemies. This ring can be obtained in the world of Yesha and by exploring the Far Woods Zone. While those rings can be used now, eventually you'll want to get the Braided Thorns, which grants an insane overall critical rate that is easy to maintain, and the Compulsion Loop that can even provide significant fire rate speed. And lastly for the Amulet, the Range Finder is the one you will eventually want to get, which can provide a staggering amount of 30% range damage when its effect is fully stacked. You will lose the added fire rates of the Gunslinger Charm, but the added range damage can offset the loss easily. When dealing with bosses, however, you can retain the Gunslinger Charm if you prefer the higher fire rate. Relics greatly depend on the user's preference and how good they are in terms of playing the game. Experienced players may use an advanced relic that adds more offensive buffs by disregarding the need to replenish their health. But for beginners, I would still recommend using the Dragon Heart as a general relic. Acquiring relic fragments is heavily based on RNG, thus I will be suggesting to you to use whatever you have right now. But if blessed with RNG, concentrate on elemental damage, fire rate, recoil, crit chance, and range damage. Traits, on the other hand, can be tricky things to upgrade, and specific traits randomly show up in the field by completing side dungeons, NPC quests, and more. The core traits, Vigor, Endurance, Spirit, and especially Expertise should be maxed first for players to have higher chances of surviving in combat early on. Expertise is a must, especially since this build relies on active skills. Remember that you can respec traits, so don't worry about that in the early going of the game. Trait handling is another good trait which reduces weapon spread and recoil by a significant amount, and this trait offsets the cons of the XMG57 Bonesaw, making it even more of an ideal weapon for this build. 
By reaching the last parts of the story, this trait can be obtained from progressing the game. Next is the footwork trait, which increases the build's movement speed when aiming. I need to stress how important this is, since strafing while aiming can save players from minor projectiles and prevents the need to roll, which interrupts your firing. The footwork trait can be obtained by completing the Terminus Station dungeon in Nerud. And finally, the Gunslinger's Archetype traits, Ammo Reserves, and Longshot are two great additions to this build's repertoire as they further enhance the Bone Saw's ammunition and range. Players are welcome to add more extra trait points on whatever trait they have currently, as these will serve as a total upgrade in general, and they can swap to these ones later once they've acquired them. The Loaded Sharpshooter heavily relies on the build's active skills to reach its peak performance, and it's worth noting that the entire duration of this build's active skills is what I call the Burst Phase. Players need to follow sets of skills and mod rotations in order to get the most from this build. To begin the rotation properly, fire up the Bora mod to force enemies to reveal their vulnerable spots. Quickly activating the Hunter's Mark active skill will then mark enemies and increase the build's range damage. Following up with the Gunslinger's Bullet Storm increases the build's fire rate and reloading speed immensely. And lastly, activate the Hot Shot mod before firing Bone Saw. While in the middle of the burst phase, since the Bone Saw accumulates heat from continuous shots, pay attention before the overheat gauge reaches its threshold and quickly swap to the MP60R and fire away. If you fail to switch and the Bone Saw overheats, you'll be locked into its overheat animation, wasting your burst window. Keep this in mind and ensure your ammo capacities for both guns are fully loaded before entering the burst phase. When the active skills expire, simply keep on fighting and wait for them to come off cooldown to start this skill and mock rotation once again. Final Thoughts The Loaded Sharpshooter is an absolute beast on the battlefield. Its immense damage, incredibly high fire rate, and speedy weapon switching capabilities make it fun to use for both beginners and experienced players. If you find the Boar mod clunky or difficult to use, you can skip it in your rotation and instead start from activating the Hunter's Mark and you'll still deal significant damage. This is one of my go-to builds simply because of the burst damage it deals when all mods and skills are active. Seeing those high continuous damage numbers is so satisfying, especially when ripping off a huge chunk of a boss's health in a very short period of time. The Loaded Sharpshooter is easy to build and enjoyable for players of all skill levels. So that wraps up our first Remnant build. I hope you guys found it enjoyable and learned a few things. I hope you guys are enjoying the game. I know I am. Let me know what you guys think of the build. If you have suggestions for future builds, let me know in the comments below.